everyone, welcome to this Coach's Corner workshop, Mobilise, Stabilise, Strengthen for the Lower Back. I'm here with Matty today, we're going to be taking you through some exercises that will help relieve lower back pain and help prevent lower back pain too. Now this is very common within boxing because we're quite tight in our shoulders, in our hips and our lower back can start to supercompensate for these restrictions in movement. Especially when we're going under high training loads, high intensities, this can cause the back to be inflamed, overused and end up uh, creating pain, them niggling injuries that can affect performance but can also keep you out of competition. So this is a really important workshop for you to follow. Now there's three key areas that we're going to cover today and it's around three types of back, in, uh, back pain. The first one that we're going to look at is the QL. The QL is a quadratus lumborum. So we'll call it QL for now. And if you just turn around Matty, I'll just show where it's situated. Situated in the hip, it comes up to the uh, lower, sp um, sorry, lower rib cage. And it just sits in here. And what its, um, what its function is, is for like side bending. Now, the, it's quite hard to stretch the QL. And if somebody comes in with a QL injury, we normally look to try and do some soft tissue release. But the reason why it's painful is because it's been overused. And that's because there's other things going off in the chain. And the main, thing, the main reason why the QL ends up being tight is due to obliques and lateral stabilizers, core stabilizers not being as strong, and also restriction in thoracic rotation. So, Matt, if you just want to get in your stance, and if you throw a right hand and throw it straight. Now, the thoracic part of the spine, if you just turn this way, is around about midpoint up towards the top of your back. Okay? So, what we want to do, we want to try and improve rotation in this part of your back. So, let's say, let's go side on again, Matty, and we throw that right hand again. Let's say if we improve rotation through this top part of your back, Okay, you're getting more range and you're getting more power. Also, let's say if we're standing out of range, Matty would have to go through that full thoracic rotation in order to reach me. Now let's say if you're restricted in here, if you rotate, ro rotate through, let's say if you are wanting to try and get that little bit extra, you're not allowed to rotate through your shoulders, what are you likely to do? Either go forward, yeah, or bend to the side. Okay, and that's what mostly happens. Because we're tight in here, in the top of our shoulders through thoracic rotation, we look to try and use our QL muscles. So, and especially like when you're like slipping, head movement, you're likely to use these QL muscles as well. Okay, so what I'm going to take you through first is some thoracic rotation exercises that we use at Boxing Science. Okay, the first exercise we're going to work on are eagles. And then we're going to start breaking it down to look at thoracic rotation through different exercises. So Matt is going to start doing the eagles now. This is a great exercise for shoulder mobility, rotational mobility. It stretches off the back and the hips as well. And Matt is just following, eyes following his hands. He's trying to keep his arms on level with his chest to really start stretching off that chest rather than just flinging his arms back and bringing his knee just on level with his hips. So the main thing that we want to see here is the shoulder actually touching the floor and the knee being as close to the floor as possible. If you can only achieve one, try and get the shoulder to the floor first, then the knee as close to the floor as possible. Now what we're seeing here, if you're just finishing that, um, in that finishing position, sorry Matty, is that you're seeing a lot of rotation through this midpoint here. And this is what we're likely to do because we're not getting the right amount of range the thoracic part. So we're going to break that down into half eagles. I just want you to pop your knee on top of here and I want you to hold it down with this hand. That's it. Good. And all we're going to do, we're going to break that section off and you're going to work through rotation there. Good. And then back. Good. And I'm just going to push forward, keep that rib cage locked down and just go to there. Now that's a lot harder now, isn't it? So what is, Matt is now feeling 
if you don't force against it here, just try and get it top part of your back. What Matt is feeling now here is feeling it more in his chest area, more in his posterior shoulders as well. And we're really focusing on that facet rotation. So if we're just doing exercises in the gym and just going through the motions and not looking to that purpose, what we'll look to do is trying to use these muscles that are overactive, our brain's wanting to use them muscles first. So do that again, if you're just doing half eagles, working over, you want to use your back. If we start breaking it down, working towards the purpose of the exercise, you get more out of the exercise. All right, moving on to this next section, where we're going to be working on the lateral stabilizers of the core. And we target this through anti-rotation and anti-lateral flexion exercises. The first one that Matt is going to do is a rotational plank, so this body weight exercise, you're going to get into a plank position, which is to have your feet just a little bit wider than hip width apart. Then you're going to bring your arms um, parallel with each other, crossed over, hips are level with the shoulders, belly button tucked in, glutes engaged, drop these shoulders in, good. And then you're just going to rotate onto your side, and we're resisting that rotation and lateral flexion as we turn round. And as we get into the side plank, it's very much anti-lateral flexion exercise. So even though it's called rotational plank, the main thing that we want to do is uh, resist lateral flexion. So that's side bending. So Matt is turning onto the side of his feet, keeping his hips high, so then his body line is straight. The key thing to consider is when he rotates, so if you just want to do it towards the camera again, Matty, we want to make sure that we're pivoting on the spot because what can happen is that when we start to rotate, we start to kind of get this side bending in. And that's what's going to kind of work our uh, QL muscles. So we want to go there, pivot on the spot and rotate around. Next muscle, an area of lower back pain that we can come across is uh, flaring up of the rectus spinae. This is uh, responsible for bit extension of the spine. And this could happen due to tight hips, but mostly down to like being kyphotic in nature. Because if you're just getting your boxing stance, Matty, boxers are going to be rounded in their shoulders, going to be overactive in their shoulders as well. The shoulders are coming forward, so it can be quite tight around the upper back. So the main thing that we want to focus on to try and relieve some strain off the rectus spinae muscles is by uh, improving thoracic extension. And then we're going to look at some anti-extension core exercises to help improve strength in the core to avoid that flaring of the rib cage and supercompensation. So let's move on to some anti uh, sorry, some thoracic extension exercises for the upper back. So we're going to start off with some uh, thoracic extension exercises. So again, thoracic section is like from the top of your back to the midpoint of your back. And the first one that we're going to do is the angry cat happy dog. You know that one, you're familiar with it, yeah? So let's get into all fours. And basically we're going to go through, stick, let's go in happy dog position. Good. And we're really dropping our back down. And then we're going to try and go into angry cat where we're hunching up, good. And this is just improving the range of motion, the muscles in your back. You've got some quite good range there, Matty, which is pretty good. Great work. Okay, so the next one will be to just work on that thoracic extension. Now, this is uh, traditionally done with a foam roller. We haven't got access to it in the boxing gym today. So we've got uh, the medicine ball. So all I want you to do, Matty, is uh, have your feet up there. Your feet up there, turn around. Good. And you're going to have that medicine ball into upper back. Just go up a little bit more. Good. Yeah. And Matt is going to start off with his hands crossed. And all he's going to do is try and lean his head back, but try and keep his hips on the floor. So he's got to try and extend his back as much as he can and then back. Good. And this is improving the extension through the upper back. To increase the strain on this, you can pop your hands just behind your head, pop your elbows back. Good. You should feel that all across the top of your chest and across muscles in your upper back. It's important to keep these hips fixed. 
because what people are likely to do, because they're quite rigid in the back, is the hips are start to lift as well. And they're not getting that full stretch. So there we have a few thoracic extension exercises. Really important because this will stop ourselves from hyperextending through the lower back. Now it's time to work on some anti-extension exercises through the core to strengthen up the core muscles so we, we're stopping ourselves from supercompensating. Now let's go on to something a little bit more dynamic now. We've got ab wheel rollout. Probably every boxing gym has probably got one of these, but if not, they're about five, 10 pounds on Amazon or something like that. So a really good exercise, but often it's performed incorrectly. I'm going to go through a few coaching cues now to make sure that you get this right. So I want you to grab the ab wheel. And I want you to just do a roll out just normal. <coughs> Good. Yeah, Matt has probably got it spot on straight away, just a few little tweaks. So a main thing that I'm likely to see when they do the roll out is that they're likely to drop in that lower back. Remember, this is an anti-extension exercise, so we want to resist this extension. We want to keep that rib cage locked down, that core switched on. Also, you want to keep your hips involved all the time and not go through that full range of motion. I'm going to show you reasons why now. So let's go 80-20 mile. So if you just start on this line here and just finish just shy of the line there, through here, if we go too long with our rollouts, our core might not be able to withstand that tension and your lower back starts to take over. So if you work between that mid-range there, you're likely to keep that activating your core slow, solely and not look to supercompensate anywhere else. So let's go from this line here, three quarters there. Keep your hips involved there, good. So when you come back, don't let your hips come back first, good. Keep your shoulders pinned back too. Start over it, good. You should feel that a lot more in your core now. Good. So, like, you've probably been told before, let's try and go down as far as we can, and that's a challenge. And maybe if you do small reps like that, you know, I've put it on uh, social media before, people are like, asking why they're only doing half reps. And the reason why is because we're keeping that tension solely going through the core. Okay, so we're going to go on to the third and final section of this workshop, and this is looking at uh, the piriformis. Now, a lot of people might struggle with really lower back pain, just sitting at the top of the hip, and sometimes this pain can radiate down your leg a little bit and might feel a little bit like uh, sciatica pain. In fact, like, this could be piriformis syndrome. This is a little muscle that just sits at the back of your hip, underneath your glute, and this is responsible for lateral rotation and hip abduction whilst it's flexed. So if you think about a boxing stance, being in this position, the piriformis is getting really overworked, especially if our glutes aren't very strong. Now it's quite hard to stretch the piriformis because it's such a small muscle. So what we're going to do, we look at some soft tissue release work to start off with. So we're going to go on some soft tissue release work for the piriformis. Now we can use a foam roller, However, it's quite hard to target the performance through the foam roller, so we use a massage ball. Um, might not get a good angle of this, but my, what you're going to do, you're going to pop this, trying to get it into your glute, but you're going to be like kind of in internal rotation position. So you're going to be like in this position here, pop it there and just pop the ball into there. Good. So this kind of stretches off glutes and helps you to try and target that piriformis more. If you just go at it with a straight leg, the glute will be switched on and it, the kind of the ball won't be able to um, get to the piriformis because the kind of the soft tissue release will be quite superficial. So by popping your knee, uh, sorry, your foot on top of your knee you can get into that performance more. Can you feel that, Matt? Yeah. yeah. So basically just have a move around, maybe just try and kind of go onto your side a little bit. So it just sits just underneath your glute there. So you grimace a little bit there. Good. Let's try it on your right side as well. Let's see whether you feel any difference between left and right. 
Uh, so you swap your legs. Yeah. Good. Just try and turn into it a little bit. Good stuff. Feel any differences between left and right? Uh, the right was a bit tighter. Yeah, a bit tighter, yeah. This is quite common in orthodox boxes. The um, rear hip, so the right hip, ends up being a bit tighter. TFL being quite tight because we externally rotated. So often, performance is tighter on the right side than the left. So that brings us to the end of this workshop. Mobilise, stabilise, strengthen for the lower back. Have a go at these exercises. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment box below. Thanks, Matty for being guinea pig for boxing science, and I'll see you on the next workshop. <laughs>